This is the Surface Laptop Studio. I talked about it a bit in the launch video, but I've been able to spend some time with it and use it for a few things, and I have a couple of thoughts, both good and bad. If I have to sum it all up, I'd say that it's good. It's what I expected from Microsoft, and they delivered on a good device. I'll dig into the details and all that in just a bit, but first, let's give it a quick unboxing. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but there is something really cool about a well-packaged product from the graphic on the box to the way the product is laid out in the box to simple things like the plug and the paperwork that we will never read. I always enjoy the process of breaking open the packaging. The model that you see here is on the higher end of the spectrum with 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte drive, and the RTX 3050 from NVIDIA. Pricing wise, the model is 2,700, but it can go as high as 3,099 or as low as 1,599, depending on the configuration. As a person that creates a lot and has to deal with larger video files, the larger size is definitely more in my wheelhouse and I need the extra processing power for my videos. Now for Windows fans, the model ships with Windows 11, which is really nice. Unlike in the past when transitioning from one OS to another was a huge change that could potentially impact how you work, this shift to 11 seems less distracting. It definitely looks and feels a lot smoother with some really great animations, more rounded corners, and they got rid of those tiles from the past version, which I can honestly say that I rarely, if ever, used. One major change I will point out is the switching of the taskbar, though. Most people will expect it to be on the left, but for this version of the OS, it has been moved to the center. For the power user, I imagine keyboard shortcuts are going to be the main way to get around, and those are still available, so I don't see this as anything wild that changes the way you actually use the system. As I mentioned in the first look video, the big attraction and change outside of the OS is the way you actually use the Surface now. It was created to be used in three different ways. First, as a standard PC or laptop with a normal setup. Obviously, this mostly feels like the natural way to use it, and I find myself using it this way the most because I'm constantly on the go. One of the things I look for in a laptop is the tension in the lid. I know it sounds weird, but stay with me here. I prefer to be able to open and close it with one hand and not have to slide it all over the table. I can do it in this mode the best, even though it does slide a little bit when opening the laptop. On the flip side, the traction is great when you're picking your angle, so that department pretty much gets a 10 out of 10 for me. However, the second mode, stage mode, is where I wasn't as happy with the performance. While flipping the screen is pretty easy to do, just grab it close to the top and the center and the magnets release pretty easily, but putting it into stage mode is where things get a little dicey. When trying to transition into the stage mode, it slides the bottom of it. You can get it close if you move your hand to the top of the device and that also depends on the angle. Again, not something that's going to be a deal breaker by any means, but more of a small annoyance that I find myself dealing with when transitioning between the setups. Now the final stage mode, this is the one that I found myself using the least. With normal mode, it feels right for a normal laptop use. The stage mode, it feels great for just sitting back and watching YouTube or using Xbox Game Pass. The studio mode is more business or creator oriented and I just didn't find myself using it in this way that often. If I needed to show someone something, I usually just close it up and carry it over and then open it back up. This is in no way saying the mode isn't great, it just didn't match my personal workflow. There was something different about taking the OG version top screen off versus folding it down. I'll see how that evolves over time, but as of right now, it is cool, but not useful for my current production flow. This mode also doesn't give you access to the power or volume buttons, which makes me think this isn't meant to live in studio mode, but more of like a bonus feature. You can use the software buttons, of course, if that's something that you prefer to do for the volume, but once you turn this off, you have to open it back up to actually turn it back on. All right, speaking of my production flow, the screen looks absolutely gorgeous. Microsoft squeezed every bit of goodness they could out of this 120 hertz display. Whether you're just scrolling or reading a Word doc, you feel the difference in how clear it is. The full resolution is 2400 by 1600 with the 1500 to one contrast ratio. When Microsoft sent this over, they also included the new Surface Slim Pen 2, which conveniently has a place to charge right beneath the front of the device. With the laptop studio, you get haptic feedback on the pen, which is pretty nice. My drawing abilities leave a lot to be desired, but having that feedback when riding on the surface in studio mode does at least make it feel like I know what I'm doing. I can only imagine how that would help someone that can actually draw. 
The feedback would be pretty invaluable when shading or trying to create the right line size. With the new shape of the Laptop Studio, as I said, you can charge your pen underneath. Now, I do wish there was some sort of visual cue here on the front that let you know you were charging the pen or that it was underneath the screen, possibly somewhere on the taskbar, but you don't get that. I feel like it's a relatively easy change to make and I think it would be really helpful. Outside of that, the pen is made well. You have two programmable buttons, one on the top and the other on the shaft. There are like 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity on it, so if you draw, you should be able to get pretty close to the sensitivity and thickness of the line that you're looking for. Pricing for the pen is $129 for the new pen, but you can also use the past generations if you already have one, but it won't have all the new features like the haptic feedback. Overall, the device feels solid. The build feels great. I would even call it premium. The hinges feel sturdy through each mode and I don't have any concerns about them getting loose. The touchscreen is responsive, and even without the Surface Pen, you can create cool drawings on the whiteboard app with just your finger. You just need to be way, way, way more talented than I am. Windows 11 overall feels great. There are a few things that have been shifted around, but after using it a day or so, you'll fall into your usual groove pretty quickly. Power users may take some getting used to things not being exactly where they want them to be, but the overall experience is better than the past OS, and I think most people would like the new look and feel. It feels more modern and brings windows into the 2020s with a style and grace, as they say. All right, for the ins and out, you have Thunderbolt 4 capable slots on the left side. You have a headphone jack on the right, and the Surface plug is right there as well. It's a very capable machine. For creators that are editing 4K video to business folks that make this a daily driver, to the person that casually uses this as the at-home computer, you're completely covered with plenty of room to grow. It's not without its quirk, but what laptop isn't? If Windows is your thing, this is a great option to look into, especially if those three different modes appeal to you. Yes, you've seen versions of it before, but for Windows 11 and Microsoft Surface, this feels like the best implementation of that Surface brand so far. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.